Um, so that was kind of an overview of hierarchical clustering. And then now I'll move on into the final section um, of this lecture, which is just weighted gene co-expression network analysis. Um, and this is a method that is specific to biology. Um, it's widely used for identifying co-expressed gene modules um, specifically. And it was first developed as kind of an attempt to break down this hairball structure of gene-gene networks like you kind of see in the right. Um, so essentially, I just took 500 random genes from ARCHIS-4, um, and I set an arbitrary kind of like uh, distance measure uh, threshold. And even then, no matter how small I make the threshold, you still get this very difficult to parse network or subnetwork of genes. Um, and the reason it's included in this section is because it does make use of a slightly hierarchical clustering method, which I'll go over a little bit more in depth later. Um, but it's also very unique in the sense that because it's biologically based, um, not only are you trying to look at these modules of co-expressed genes, but you're also looking specifically for similar expression patterns or any sort of functional relation between those different gene modules. And this was a method that was introduced in 2005 by Steve Horvath, who is now at UCLA, and uh, Bin Zhang, who is actually a current faculty member at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Um, it's, it's been implemented as an R package in 2008. I think it's still maintained by members of Steve Horvath's lab up to this day. Um, and there is a new Python implementation of it, um, but it's quite new. So if you do choose to use that, uh, I would definitely be cautious with that. But for WGCNA, you start with initializing kind of this uh, gene gene network um, or gene gene co expression network, hence the name. And so, of course, you're going to need some metric for determining gene gene co expression similarity. Um, but you want kind of this like square matrix of genes where each cell represents the similarity between. Uh, two specific genes. Um, and here you can kind of see that there are some patterns in this matrix of just random genes um, and how similar they are with each other. But WGCNA basically takes that initial gene gene co expression network and then it starts to identify these initial gene modules or clusters through a form of hierarchical clustering that also accounts for shared neighbors. So this is what uh, the original authors called a topological overlap measure. Um, for instance, if gene A is very similar to gene B, but they share in terms of uh, the expression pattern, but then they are not sharing any other similar or common neighbors, then they are actually less likely to be clustered together by WGCNA um, because you the emphasis is really on finding these very connected modules of genes and not just looking at expression similarity as uh, its own it's a, as its only measure. And so here you can kind of see like um, how it actually ends up clustering some of those genes um, and then produces this dendrogram um, and this heat map visualization. And you'll see that each of the gene modules or clusters that it detects, it actually assigns to a different color. And you'll see these colors kind of repeated in the other steps in this process. Um, so then what a WGCNA does is that it associates each of those modules with some sort of biological relevance. Um, and how it does this is that it computes an eigengene, which is used as the representative of gene expression profiles within a module. So basically each module is now associated with this, its eigengene, and this is generally the first PCA component uh, for the module. And then the gene significance can be computed between these eigengenes and various traits. So if you can think about um, membership of a gene in a certain pathway, that could be a binary vector. So maybe zero or one for every gene in that eigengene, whether or not it is a member of a pathway. Or if you have some trait that you can actually get a correlation measure with, then for each gene in the eigengene vector, you can actually get like a correlation metric with that trait. Um, and then this heat map actually shows um, a following step in the process where you're actually looking at the similarities between those modules as well. So you can see those different module colors represented along the rows and the columns. And then this is basically showing the correlation between eigengenes from each of those modules. So not only are you looking at the association of each gene module with 
uh, different biological traits um, or pathways, but you can also actually start to see which modules are very similarly related to each other or have similar expression patterns. Um, and then another key uh, aspect of WGCNA is that you can also look at specific genes from your modules of interests. So it allows you to plot the significance of genes for a trait against its correlation with the module eigengene. So here you can see that we're just plotting all the genes in this brown module, and then we're looking at their significance for body weight. So basically how significantly is a given gene associated with the trait of body weight? Um, and then compared also to along the x-axis, it's actual module membership in the brown module. And this is basically the correlation of a single gene um, with all of the other genes in its module. So basically how highly connected is it to all of those other uh, module genes? And if you can identify these key driver genes, um, which are those that have high module membership and also high gene significance for the trait, um, then you can actually identify these key genes that might be responsible for driving a lot of the pathway changes or processes that you're interested in, um, in your particular analysis.